Hello and welcome back to my gem mode with Keely from Recharge Wrestling. And we set up the card for payback on the last episode. And so we are going to run through the payback card on this episode. You, I'll be watching the main event and the opener this time. I'll only be watching the two. So we kick off with Asuka and Belair, which we will get into. Uh, this is just a, it's a tables match to open off. Then we go into the mid card. Where we have a call out of Trish and Mandy uh, as Mandy is injured. Uh, we then have Apollo and Elias against Dominic and Humberto for the tag belts. As we need Apollo to wrestle this week. Seth is advertising as is well to a bit later on. We have Riddle and Drew in the mid card in a one-on-one -on -one match. Uh, Riddle has some stamina issues. We have Rhea and Dakota in Extreme Rules. Okay, the stamina is low here, but we do what we've got to do. They both have Extreme Rules uh, specialities, these two, so it should be a good one. Clint, our, our favourite, Clint McDougall, has got a little advertisement. And then our main event is Cody Rhodes and Damian Priest for the Universal title in an Extreme Rules match. So can Cody become our champion? Let's find out. Confirm booking. So let's spectate our opening match between Asuka and Bianca Belair for the SmackDown Women's title. This one could be interesting. Obviously, you saw in the last episode, we had a couple of... It, we, had, well, we had a lot of issues with one episode of SmackDown in particular where we couldn't ha feature, like, three superstars. And then we had fitness issues and all sorts going on. It's an absolute horror show. But we've got to pay back. We have a women's title match. And a fairly decent feud between Belair and Asuka as Bianca Belair is the woman challenging for the SmackDown Women's title. And I, I like the payback graphics there, just uh, as we see Belair come to the ring. Let's skip the scene. But here is our champ. And she's been champ since basically week one. I think Rhea had the title, lost it to Asuka in week one. The Asuka defended against Rhea a couple of times, and now this is a kind of a second challenger, really, is Bianca Belair. So Asuka has been on top of the women's division almost from day in in uh, my GM mode. Now, can she defend against Bianca Belair, which I think is a tables match, I'm pretty sure. It is, I see the tables. That's what it's all for, the SmackDown women's title. Belair. Asuka. Ooh, here we go. As Asuka just kind of back off it there as Belair comes towards her, but Asuka hits the first suplex of the match. And again, with the opener and the main event in particular, we need highly rated matches. Both of the matches are title matches, and they're both feuds, and they both... I mean, this one's tables. We have extreme rules later on in the night, so we've got big matches planned. So hopefully they can deliver as Belair fights out of the corner on Asuka and hits oh, look like a Riptide style move into a gut buster and just showing off her strength for Belair I mean if she just held on to her and moved towards the uh, table she could settle this match now Belair but just showing off her strength and dropping Asuka to the mat I mean oh, yeah, look at that shine it's undisrespect from Belair wiping her feet towards Asuka I mean could Belair be the new face of the SmackDown Women's Division? I mean, it takes some ask. I'm not sure Asuka's actually lost on Universal Mode. She probably has record of wins and losses. But obviously, if, 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 you, if you know, do leave a note in the comments. But I, I believe Asuka may not have lost yet on Universal Mode. Oh, no. My GM Mode, sorry. So, it's going to be some feat for whoever can knock her off I think uh, my original plan was to try and get Trish in this role but the, the rivalry never started with Trish it started with Belair and Asuka and 
probably a bigger match actually, Belair and Asuka, than if you had Trish in this spot. But Trish is calling out Mandy Rose later. Unfortunately, Mandy Rose got injured. Uh, that's because we actually had to use her in a big match on a SmackDown because of everyone missing that SmackDown for some reason. So, so price I pay, price you pay in my GM mode, but we got to this point so far. Really, the main, and I'm glad it's a, on the last pay per view we had to do the main event of Seth v Riddle with no real build because I promised Seth a main event match. Whereas at least this time we've got the main event which I think deserves the main event slot in um, Cody and Priest. So the right match now. We've got Drew and Riddle in the mid card as well, the tag team title match as well. So we've got a lot of decent matches on this card as Belair goes to the top rope. No one's gone for a table yet. Elbow drop. Oh, I'm not sure she actually caught Asuka there. A lot of people wearing those tearly shirts, and they're not all the same shirts I've I saw a head of a table one there. Um, not sure what shirt that is, but yeah, a teal seems to be the in colour in Calgary. Canada as Asuka hits Belair with the table and sets it up in the corner. I mean, can Asuka settle this now? She, but before she does, she's going to run into the rope, she's going to hit the hip attack. Oh, but Belair dives out of the way. How important could that be? B from Bella get out of the way of that. Maybe not that important if Asuka has put her in the corner. And we could about to see the finish of this match already. This has not been a quick one. As Asuka wins the match, retains her title, and can anyone beat Asuka? My god, this woman is on a tear in my GM mode. Just dominating SmackDown Women's Mission. I'm gonna need to bring in a woman to challenge her and knock her off her throne. Because she is just beating everyone in sight. She's beaten Rhea multiple times. Now she's beaten. And that was a fairly quick match. So I'm interested to see what that gets star rating wise. Hopefully fans are into it because of the rivalry that has been building between these two. But let's see how that does. As I go on and I will sim the rest of the matches. Oh, it's a four and a half star classic. We're only level three, by the way. There's more to come between these two. We've got another level to go up yet. So that could be a good SmackDown main event in a couple of weeks' time. But four and a half star match there. Just goes to show the actual match you see doesn't mean anything with the ratings. It's done on rivalry and popularity and all that. That's what it all comes down to. But four and a half star opener. Fantastic. Trish calls out Mandy. We're at level four now. So I can't wait to get that level four. I mean, we've got a couple of... Women's feuds there that are culminating. Uh, let's simulate this tag team match. Apollo and Elias, the newly formed team, are the new champions in a mediocre match. Okay. Two, two stars, but we've got new tag team champions. Seth actually loses one in popularity, but gains me 11 grand, so that's what really matters. Riddle and Drew are one on one. There's a bit of a rivalry here. Hopefully this can... It's just a normal match, though. Riddle beats Drew. Two and a half star. We're up to level three. But it's, it's a mid-card. I can allow... As, as long as these matches are happening in the mid-card, it's, it's okay. Walter advertising. Loses seven. God, that's, that's actually a big drop for Walter there. But again, against 11 grand. Rhea and Dakota in Extreme Rules. Look at their stamina. Though. This, could, this is a risk, this match. But they're both extreme rule experts, so this could be an absolute cracker. I think they've got a bit of a rivalry as well, Rhea and Dakota. Rhea beats Dakota Kai in a four-star match. Level two rivalry, only level two. Uh, Clint McDougal doesn't advertise what I mean. So far, we've seen Seth and Walter lose popularity. What about old Clinty McDougal? He actually gains me one... Gains, gains me a thousand pound more money than Walter and Seth did. So, well done, Clint. My, my promo king... And I'm going to spectate the main event of Cody Rhodes and Damian Priest for the Universal title in an Extreme Rules match. And we signed Cody on a, on a temporary contract, which I've extended. Uh, I like to time down permanently, actually, Cody, I think. Especially, well, especially if, he becomes, if he becomes champ, obviously. Going to have to if he becomes champ. Um, yeah, he's, his popularity has increased. I used the To The Moon card on him uh, last episode. So, we, we have strapped a bit too, Cody. So, I'm hoping uh, 
hoping to keep hold of him, definitely. Whereas Trish, I did extend Trish's contract, but it's not worked. I mean, she's just got to level four rivalry with Mandy, so maybe there will be a payoff there. Help me out on the weekly show. Um, I haven't been able to use her on the pay-per-view yet. And I don't know what's next, actually. There's no way to see a um, calendar here on, on my GMO, so I can't really see what's coming up. So for this ad hoc, as we get into our main event of Payback, I mean, I'm sure Raw will do something like Tozawa v Brock again, or probably be buddy Kevin Owens and Dexter Lumis and them. But here we go as Cody with Danny Birch's uh, graphics. But the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, is here. I mean, I just say the, the model looks better when it's you don't see it here. It does. It looks. It looks all right. It looks all right. Cody Rhodes, here he comes. Can he become the Universal Champion? If he does, he has to beat this man who beat Drew McIntyre the last pay-per-view in the in the opener. Uh, would, probably would have been the main event. Had to do it, if I could put it as a main event, but. I spoke about Asuka in a women's division. Priest has made this men's division. This is a men's division with Riddle, with Drew, with Seth, with Walter. Now with Cody. And Priest has been on top. So you can't... You know, you, you, fair play to Damien Priest. He's had an absolute tear so far in my GM mode. As here we go. The Universal title is on the line. I'll tell you what. This belt gets a bit of stick. But I actually quite like it. Maybe because it's blue. If it was red, I probably wouldn't be as keen. But I think the belt actually looks all right here. Yes. Cody Rhodes. He's ready. The Archer is ready. The Nightmare v. The Archer. This one's Extreme Rules. And we're off in the main event of Payback. Oh, Priest. Get out of the way. But Cody does get in an elbow to Cody Rhodes, though. Priest driving the knees into the midsection of Cody. I, mean, I, I do think my men's vision is pretty strong when you consider I've got the Humbertos, Dominics, Apollo, T Bar, Elias. I've got a few decent, and I mentioned all the top guys earlier. Maybe in terms of recruitment down the line, I think the women's vision may be the place to strengthen. I think because now Rhea and Belair have both lost title matches. I've got Asuka. And then I've got, you know, you've got your Dakota Kai's and Mandy Rose's. And I've brought in Trish short term. But I think I could do, if I could get in a Bailey, Sasha, Becky, Charlotte style figure, I think that could really help out my women's divisions. That's, that's going to be my uh, focus pick off. This is Priest going for an early pinfall. On, I guess a two count on Cody. It's an early pinfall from uh, Priest here. See now, just hold on to the shoulder of Cody Rhodes. Cody gets out and takes the legs away from Priest. And are we going to see anything extreme in this match? So far, no one has gone to... Just Cody uses some absolute strength there to lift up Priest by his head. Oh, working on the arm of the Archer. Who does like using the Reckoning to win matches. So taking out his arm is not a bad idea as a little... Package suplex takes Priest down. Priesto runs in, but Cody stops him in his tracks. Slaps to the chest. Pulls him around. This is actually the... Oh, he's going for the kill switch on Priest. This is the um, match of where the finishes are basically the same. The crossroads and the um, reckon. They're essentially the same move. So... Who's going to hit it better is Cody here. He's going for some interesting move here. What's he going for here, Cody? It's like a backwards pile driver on Priest. He's going to go for the pinfall. Is that enough to see Cody as Universal Champion? It is! That's it! I can't believe it! Cody Rhodes has won the Universal Championship with that. I mean, it's an interesting... I don't know what to call it. It's like a backwards pile driver on Damian Priest. And Cody is champion in my GM mode wow 
that has stunned me. Again, a short match. But hopefully the rivalry was heated up enough that we'll still get a decent raid to never look at Cody soaking it in. It's a four and a half. So again, rivalry is complete. And I wonder what happens next then for Priest as Cody has come in on a short-term contract. And he has rocketed to the top of the SmackDown The Vit roster. But let's see what Raw did. Four and a half star classic. Cody and Priest and Cody's our new champion. Can you believe it? Not a crossroads of record and insight. No, they've, their main event in their pay-per-view... With a tag team title match. A normal tag team title match, by the way. It's got a Hell in a Cell in there. Women's title. Normal mid card, But it's EO Shrine to me. They can have crackers. I mean, Kevin Owens has been fighting Dexter Loomis since the start. I mean... I don't know why he wouldn't have Brock. There's no main title on the show. Just looking at the card here. I should be winning this... Uh, this pay-per-view but let's see what they do Owens and Loomis I mean Dexter Loomis keeps beating Kevin Owens now as well it's a four and a half star classic rivalry is complete I mean okay Tozawa uh, well done promo Io Shirai and Tamina going to support to be another five stars these always have absolute bangers don't they that's a four star rivalry is complete so there's a bit two rivalries there fair enough Promo from Brock had absolutely no effect. Raquel and Charlotte in the mid card. So my mid card match is actually working out strong. Yeah, they've got a three and a half for the four star mid cards. I think they're beating me on the mid card. Just like the main event doesn't live up to it. As Ricochet and Mace. Mace beats Ricochet. And the four star again. Okay, they're, they're putting out some good matches there. Racking Wild and Ibar goes to four stars. Their main event, this tag team title match. Surely this can't be four and a half stars. Ivar and Tyler Bate are tag team champions. It's a four star. I think they've beaten me overall. I think they had pretty... At least four star for every, in every match. I had a couple of poor mid-carders. But when it comes to the main event and stuff, I think I did all right. Let's have a look here. 80 for Asuka. 72 for Belair. Asuka's up to 80 now. There's mid-card Apollo and Elias. Uh, I think Mysterio and Carrillo are still quite low. Uh, but... The tag champs are the two more popular, that's fine. McIntyre 73, Riddle's stamina is 26. So the stamina here I'm interested in, in Rhea and Dakota. 28 and 26 actually, it's not too bad. Okay, that's fine. And Cody's up to 94 now, Cody, by the way. He is rocketed. Priest, only 64. I guess losing the belt has knocked him down a, a bit of, a bit on the old popularity. So Priest has actually turned into a mid-carder now after that. But Cody Rhodes is 94 popularity as my champion. Wow. That's amazing. Let's have a look how we did here. We gained 189,000 fans. And we're up to 400k. And we get a free reader booking. So we hit our um, commissioner goal. They gained nearly 200 fans. Well, that's big. And up to 700k. So they've got a lot more money than me. 300, almost, you know, 300k. Look at their champions, uh, Tazawa and Raquel. Um, but I have got an extra 28,000, nearly 29,000 fans. So that's what we're ranked on, the fans. So the money isn't an issue yet. Let's see what they do with that money. As we are four weeks till SummerSlam is next up. Uh, Rhea, I can't be... Your... I can't back you up, can I? Or can I? I rejected this before, didn't I? Maybe if I try it with Rhea... Let's try it. I've not tried it yet. And I've been down the line so far. So yeah, Rhea. I'm going to help you out. I'll help out Rhea Ripley. Dakota and Belair want to team up. Hmm. Okay. I mean, yeah, no, I'm happy to give it a go. I mean, there is that women's tag belts, which we've seen on Raw. So I wonder if I can get the same thing here on SmackDown. Um, as we are doing. All right. Let's just have a look at our roster quickly. Yeah, T-Bar.
Rollins, the worst one I've had Clint McDougall's more popular than Seth Rollins right now. I mean, something's going on here, isn't it? That's mad. Look how low Seth Rollins is. And also Walter, by the way. He was well high before. Interesting. Maybe Riddle could. Oh, no, Riddle McIntyre still got a bit to go. Just gonna see who's next for Cody. I mean, I could push a Walter or a Seth into a program with Cody, potentially, and uh, try to get their popularity up a little bit. Let's just have a look at my power cards. I haven't got it to the moon, have I? Now I've got a health spa. I can prove I six more stamina. I mean, what's my stamina? If I go to stamina, who's low? I mean, Riddle is low. Okay, guy Priest. I mean, a lot of people that competed really are low. Okay, not the right stamina just yet. I've got this other health spell on. Double the cost of the opposing brands matches. I mean, that's not a bad shout to you, Sing, because they've got a lot of money over there on Raw. I get the free arena booking, which is a nice one to have. Got that one, and... Is the... Morale. How do I go to morale? I don't know how you fight morale on here. Oh, you have to click into them. 97 for Drew. I mean, Seth's on 88 morale. I mean, he hasn't done much, really. Okay, I'm not going to worry about morale just yet because I think we're in a decent place there. So, power cards rise, I'm happy. Look at the last couple of weeks for SmackDown, I've pulled away a bit from Raw. A, a bit. It is a bit so far. Um, the budget has. Look at that budget decrease. I think that's when I brought in uh, Cody and. Trish potentially that where that budget dropped down, um, but it's all about the fans. It's all about the fans. Don't care about anything else. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not gonna book anything. Yeah. What's my uh, schedule running? So I did schedule a run in on Cody this week, which is fine because that means I can set up a program. I mean, I'm thinking maybe I'm thinking Seth or Walter. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe going against Cody next. Now Priest is out of the way. Let's have a look at what free agents are available. I mentioned about female superstars. I mean, Sasha Banks is right there. 256,000, though. That's a lot of money. But maybe Sasha Banks' roster needs. She is a face, though. Let me have a look quickly at my... Oh, God. My roster, sorry. So Asuka's a heel, Rhea's a heel, my top two females are heel, Mandy's a heel as well, they're three of my top four. So I could do with a female face. Maybe I can bring in Sasha Banks. I mean, my budget isn't the strongest, but I feel like, I mentioned before, I need women. I'm going to bring in Sasha Banks. She is a part of SmackDown, and I might sign another, I might sign a um, female down here. I mean, Vicky McLeod seems to be the standout. Daniel Wallace has 88 stamina, which is, I, I like. Vicky McLeod. I mean, it's £10,000 in it. So I, don't, I, don't need to, I don't need to do that. I don't need to sign a free agent, uh, a local star right now. But Sasha Banks is a part of the roster. Okay, she's low down. She's above Clint McDougall, thank God. But she is low down on my uh, women's roster. Actually, she's my least popular woman as she comes in. But that will change. Sasha Banks will be moving up my card. Do not worry about that at all. So this is the state of play after the pay-per-view. Cody on 94 popularity. Cody is an absolute... Golden star for me right now. I mean, I wonder if it, is, is there, there's not a way I can sign him, is there? I can release him. Oh, we've got the records up here. Oh, Asuka has lost one. Okay. I've just seen these records up here. It's interesting to see some of these. Okay. 
Well, uh, apparently I've lost a match, so there goes my uh, theory. What's Seth's record? He has lost one. Um, okay, so that's the position I'm in now. I'll end the episode there, but I'm thinking maybe Seth or Walter to go up against Cody, and I'm thinking maybe Sasha and Asuka to be my next women's title feud. I've still got an Asuka, but uh, hasn't finished just yet, so maybe we'll give Sasha some promos for a couple of weeks to try and get her popularity up a little bit. So that's going to be my plan at the moment. As always, like, subscribe, comment. Let me know your thoughts. What do you think I should do in these scenarios? Who should I put against Cody? What should I do with Seth? What should I do with Sasha? pre available. There's so many moving parts on your SmackDown roster. And then Clint McDougal. How far do I push Clint McDougal? He's got up to 61 from like 20. So he's had a very meteoric rise, old Clint. But long way to go. So yeah, subscribe, leave comments. Check out our, our podcast videos. We have a lot going on on the uh, channel at the moment. And I will see you guys in the next episode. See you later.